Welcome back everybody, I hope you are well. Nine years ago today, I was stood on top of the world. Uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever managed to achieve in my life, certainly physically. Um, I could talk for hours and hours about it, but I thought there's a few things that I kind of carry with me um, in my day-to-day -day life that I thought I'd just share with you. Um, the first one is the, the body will take you a lot further than the brain will. Um, the brain is what stops you from doing anything really. Um, uh, I, I know that because I had to descend Mount Everest um, with a lung infection. I had pneumonia. I didn't know that I had it at the time. I picked it up at base camp. I managed to get up onto the summit with my Sherpa Dorji and to cut a long story short, on the way back down, um, it, it depends on the individual, but it, it doesn't, it usually takes a day or a couple of days to get back down to base camp. It took me a lot longer um, and I was really struggling. Um, I could only really take one or two steps um, and I, I, I had to stop, I had to catch my breath. I was okay on the way up, I think it was the adrenaline and the excitement, but when that disappeared and I realised I was a long way from home and a long way from any form of real safety, um, that uh, adrenaline, that excitement disappeared and was replaced with a feeling of being very anxious and very, very nervous. So on the way back down, I managed to obviously keep going um, with the help of Dorji and, and Lakba, who, who I'll be forever grateful for. But I thought I knew what being tired really was. I, I, the year before I went out to Everest, I rode across the Atlantic. I rode 12, 13, 14 hour days. I thought I was quite fit, quite a, I, I thought I knew how to push myself. But descending that mountain took me to a place that I had never be, even been close to before. I have never been so close to just dropping down and that's it, that's game over. But I kept moving, I just kept putting one foot in front of the other and, and I was somehow able to get down. And there's a very famous saying that, that I think the Navy SEALs use and that is when you think you're tired and you think you're done, you're actually only at 40% of, of what your maximum is. And I don't know about that because every individual is different, but I would, I would agree with that in, in principle really. When you think you are finished, you're, you're not even close. It's just the brain telling you that you're, you're finished. And uh, I've never, ever been so close to finding out what my, my real limits really were. But you'll be amazed at what you can achieve if you're either going to die or you have to keep going. <laughs> yeah, the, the human body is, is pretty amazing. So one of the things that I always carry with me now is the fact that actually whenever I'm having quite a long, tough day, I'm feeling fed up or whatever reason, or I'm feeling tired, I always have to stop and think, mate, you're not even close, not even close to your actual limits. And I always think back to those couple of days when I was descending Everest and I was in a, I was in a, not such a good place, but I was able to get back down. And a couple of other things that I, I sort of think about a lot, and, and that is, Never judge a book by its cover. Um, there were a lot of interesting people that I met out on Everest. I didn't really have anything to do with that many people, but I was able to witness other people and, and what they were doing. And, you know, I saw a few people that perhaps didn't look the part. They were, they were a little bit older. They were using supplementary oxygen much lower down than most people. And I thought, there's just no way you're going to get to the top. And they did. They did. Um, quite often or not, it's the people, the people that come to the front are not always the people that you think uh, are going to. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> never judge a book by its cover. I'll never, I'll, there was one person in particular who I was, was amazed that she did it and it was, it was amazing. Um, and I think some of the other things that stick with me was just having that ability to keep going. Uh, never ever underestimate that. Um, it will take you a long way um, and also there's no shortcut to the top of the world and I suppose what I mean by that is in order to stand on top of the world you have to go through a series of acclimatization climbs so you arrive at base camp you go up to camp one come back down then you go up camp two come back down then you go up camp three come back down and you do that a few times basically your body is producing more red blood cells and you're, you're slowly starting to acclimatize 
everyone has to do it, even the locals uh, who live and work out there. It doesn't really matter how fit you are, to be honest. You've got to go through some kind of process uh, to acclimatise. And I, I got back off Everest and I, and I thought, you know, it's funny, you don't have to be climbing Mount Everest. It can really apply to anything. Um, and there's no shortcut to anything worth having. And I say to kids, if you take a shortcut to something thinking you're being clever, the only place that's going to lead you is to, is to a place of disappointment. Because I, I believe anything worth having, anything worth doing, is just not going to come easy. And you're going to have to go through some kind of process. So I always, I always try to remind myself of that whenever I'm working to work. I'm currently writing a book at the moment. And some, I'm, I'm very up and down. One minute I'm loving it, the next minute I'm, I'm struggling with it. But I'm doing it every single day. And I know it will be uh, worth it. Um, so I think if any of you guys are out there now and, and thinking about what to do post lockdown and you're not really sure, just make a plan and just get after it as soon as you feasibly can. And, you know, even if you can't get out and do physical things in order to work towards your plan, your goal, just start doing research towards it now. It's, it's absolutely worth it. And a, a lot of the things that I thought were going to be a problem out on Everest for me, actually weren't. And especially when I flew around the world as well, it's, um, I was really nervous about certain things and none of them were a problem. And inevitably, you know, your brain plays tricks on you. And I try to remember this now, and again, I try to push this to, to young people, or indeed anyone. Your brain will naturally try to talk you out of something, and you need to understand that, and try to sort of reprogram it a little bit. Um, because nine times out of 10, the things that you're anxious about, the things that you're worried about, the things that you are running over time and time again in your brain, just either won't happen or just won't be a problem. Um, I, I, like I, I say, I had the opportunity to go out to Everest. I, I didn't know whether I could do it, but I tried to block those thoughts out and somehow I stood on top of the world. And a very similar thing happened uh, last year when I flew around the world, I, 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 there were, I was very close to pulling out of it because I was nervous. I didn't know whether I was gonna be able to do it and I was, it was quite up and down. And it, 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 it was difficult, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And it was actually very enjoyable. And it just goes to show that your brain is always playing tricks on you. So as it's my nine year Everest anniversary today, I thought, well, I may as well share a few things that I learned, really. Don't judge a book by its cover. Um, your brain can be your greatest ally, not your worst enemy. Um, you can push yourself so much further than you think, so much further. Um, uh, you, you really, really can, you'll be amazed at how far you can actually push yourself when you need to. Um, these are some of the things that I try and remember when I'm struggling myself. But I thought that might be quite useful for you. I just wanted to share a few things. You know, um, I'm gonna head out now um, on the bike. My, there has been some really good progress with my foot. That uh, fifth metatarsal that I broke uh, just over two weeks ago is really healing up nicely. I can move around the flat now without any real pain. And I went out yesterday and did a very, very gentle ride and um, no pain at all. So that gets me moving again, which is, which is really, really good. But that's it guys, just wanted to say happy nine year Everest anniversary and wish you a good, happy day. Hope you're all well. If you've got any questions, if you want to know how to climb Everest or you want any advice on anything at all, anything expedition related, anything related to getting sponsorship, anything related to, to, to sort of mind management and how I've managed to do a few things, and I'm no expert at all, but I do have quite a bit of experience now. Uh, let me know, drop, a, drop a, something into the comments below, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you another day.